This is the Mel Rights Activist Podcast, episode 212, where we focus on relationships, sports, pop culture, and politics from a managed point of view. First of all, we want to thank our listeners, our new ones, our OGs. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging with the fellas. What up? On today's show, we have a post nut from a woman who made some bad decisions after getting some good wood. Man, my wife makes nothing but good decisions. <laughs> Weird. That is strange, man. <laughs> the woman king is facing backlash. Hmm, a movie about black women beating up black men. Mm. Why would anybody complain about that? Yeah, for real, for real, man. We have a dear Irby from a woman who has some incriminating evidence against her mortal enemy and wonders if she should share it. And is it time for Giselle to wave the white flag on her marriage to Tom? All that and more. Right now. This is the MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. I am Kyle. I am Kamal. And we're helping you to understand the man you love. Let's get to the news, Kamal. Come on, man. Let's get into it right now. According to multiple reports, Hunter Biden wants a judge to change his child support agreement for the payments he has to make to that stripper he had a kid with, Kamal. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, Hunter says it's way too hard to consistently pay in once. <laughs> <laughs> Two things you go pay for forever, Cabal. That laptop and that lap dance. Yeah, man. Ones, yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money in ones. That's a dog. lot in ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo. Texas Governor Greg Abbott sent five Latin migrants, 50 <laughs> Latin migrants. That. I apologize, not five. Yes. 50 la- Latin migrants to Vice President Kamala Harris's home on a bus. To her house. To her house. <laughs> when reached for comment, Harris says, Thanks, Governor Abbott. My house has never been cleaner. Oh, my God. <laughs> man, she you are. the work, man. I mean, that's a good thing. She creating <laughs> jobs. Yeah, you know. This is, this <laughs> is why <laughs> she let him in. When y'all done with the kitchen in my backyard, <laughs> my head just de trimming. <laughs> they can do that on no shows except ours. <laughs> and maybe those far right shows. Hey, Kamal, yeah. it's, you know it's been a hot summer, man. 7,000 heat records were broken this summer, dog. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah, it was hot. Yeah, It was so hot, Instagram models were hoping for a hot girl winter. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's how bad it was. <laughs> it was truly hot. Yeah, that's hot, man. Yeah, man. Yo, two Pennsylvania bomb technicians remain hospitalized mm. after mm. the detonation of an explosive device during a training exercise. Ooh. Oof. Yeah, man, they got, they got messed up pretty bad. Yo, it's mm-hmm. safe to say that the technicians probably didn't pass the class. I don't think they did, dog. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a really, really safe bet, my dude. That's a safe bet. <laughs> really safe bet, dog. You wind up in the hospital, you probably got to fail on that project. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, dog, according to sources, playing football could end Tom Brady's marriage. Oh. Yeah, get me a helmet, said Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Is that all it takes? <laughs> yeah. yeah man. Uh, <laughs> put me in, coach. I'm ready to be double, Kanye. I wonder. I mean, is it too old for me? I mean, my, is it too late for your boy? I don't know. <laughs> you already got the jersey on. I got the back. jersey. I don't know, Suspiciously, man. Suspiciously, you know, yeah. you didn't I'm, have it on. The, you'd be the crippled time. out there doing the first practice, but then you start wearing hey, options. Is it worth it? Listen, man? listen. If it's going to set you free, it's going to set you free <laughs> like the truth. And that's what they got love. Yeah. Come on, what you got? You can wind up in a wheelchair, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. on the positive side, you're free at last. <laughs> Yo. A reformed sex addict who ha- who slept mm. with more than 700 men has oh. revealed that she is cured and now runs empowerment boot camps to help others beat their sex addiction. Mm. It's really cool. Mm. This is a feel-good story for everybody except the man who tried to be number 701. That's the worst, come on. That's usually you, according to you. <laughs> it's always me. I'm, a, I'm always <laughs> like patient zero, zero before. Or, oh, or the man. one after all of the wildness. I'm before or after the wildness. I never hit the wildness wave. Never. I've changed, Kamal. But everybody else got to hit. Yeah, now you're going to have to marry me. Oh, oh, need to play it. some football. Yeah. Hey, Kamal, new iPhone came out. iPhone 14, man. Yeah, uh, what? Yeah, man. One of the new features of the new iPhone, if you're somewhere where there's no service, you can connect to a satellite. And that's great if you're hiking or if you have AT&T. 
<laughs> yeah, the new iPhone actually has some new features that can help husbands come out. This is big, man. Guys like you, man. Like when you're at a restaurant, a beautiful woman walks by, the new iPhone can sense the change in your body pressure, your blood pressure, and give you a jolt to remind you not to look. Ooh, it's really nice, man. I yeah, it's that. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I am a looker. Yeah, man. Same as yeah, I. I I'm also a toucher, though. That's why my wife loves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look, but don't touch. According to our good friend, good friend of the show, uh, August Alcina. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, he's the villain of the show. Uh, yeah. Rapper Tory Lanez punched him in the mouth. Mm. Yeah. Heard about that. I'm sure he had a perfectly good reason, said Will Smith. <laughs> You knew it wasn't Will because it said punch. Nah, Will is a slapper. He's a slapper, man. He's a slapper. Uh, I don't know why I didn't put this with the other one, man. Kim Kardashian says the thing that really attracted her to Pete was after she hosted Saturday Night Live, she had a party, and Pete was the only cast member that didn't show up, Kamal. Hmm. Yeah, this is a lesson for all the men out there. Now, listen up. Ghost her at the party. She's in love. Get her name tatted. She's out of here. Ah. <sighs> That's how that works. That exactly how that worked. Damn, man. Stay Damn. a mystery. Stay a challenge. Ain't that a bitch? I know, man. Jeez. <laughs> so oh, some of these guys will be like, like just dog them. <laughs> Forget them. Like, they, they might have. They might be on to something. I might be on to something. I don't know. <laughs> Simping doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'm about the psychology of it. Yo, Make speaking it of Kim it. Kardashian. Speaking uh, of her. Her ex or whatever he is, a uh, hubby. Yeah. Uh, Kanye West says he's never read a book in his life. Okay, he said that out loud, huh? Yeah, man. Well, that should go mm. over well in family court when the judge decides who gets to pick the kid's school. Yeah, that'll do it right there, buddy. Yeah, man. Uh, you never read a book, bro. Keep that to yourself, <laughs> my dude. Keep I, that I to should yourself. be able to pick the kid's school. Never Kanye read a book. Is the king. No. Kanye's the king of keep that to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, what is it? Social media and, and, oh, and yeah. interviews. Not mm -hmm. this man's friends. Not all. his friends at all, man. Mm -mm. Hey, man. According to reports, Eminem. Speaking of uh, rappers, Eminem is working on new music. Come out. Cool. My son's favorite rapper, so I know he'll be excited. Oh yeah, his new album will be called Odie but Still Goody. <laughs> he's like fifty now, right? Yeah, he's gonna be fifty in October. It's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Eminem fifty. Wow. Yeah, fifty. Wow. So yeah, he man, was like, be, so when he came out, he wasn't. He must have been twenty five ish. Right. He, he wasn't yeah. like a kid or nothing like that. He came nah, off. He's been working for a long time. Yeah, he was like twenty. He thought he was, something. but yeah, he was. He was a grown, grown, full grown man. He wants to be the first rapper come out with the platinum record and platinum hair. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> Cisco don't count. <laughs> oh, he's not a rapper. <laughs> First rapper, yeah. Okay. But this will be, but he'll have naturally platinum hair this time. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yo, man, uh, finally for me, man, the Supreme mm -hmm. Court has suspended an Eastern Kentucky prosecutor because he promised to help a defendant in exchange for nude photos. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's cold shit. Okay, but in his yeah, defense, yeah. uh oh, he told the woman that he'd only take the case pro bono. <laughs> and she misheard, man. That ain't, that ain't his fault. He did say pro bono. That ain't his fault. She misheard him. She thought he said pro bono. And she thought he said pro bono. It was pro burner. Ah, man. Hey, man, we come back. We got some feedback. And then we have a post nut from a woman who made some bad decisions after getting some good wood. That tends to happen. What happened? Well, Kamal and I were going to let you know. It's the MRA Podcast. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? I sure hope you're enjoying the show. If you like it, I invite you to go to our website, themrapodcast.com, and catch up on over 100 episodes that we have in store for you. You ain't working. You might as well check us out. And if you want some more, go over to The World According to Cheryl and check me out on Cheryl Underwood's podcast. We post content there every single day. We have her normal radio show labeled SUR, and then the Cheryl Underwood podcast where we get in her personal business every Friday. Then on the weekends, we have the special these shows and range from late night cupcake to Auntie Cheryl's house party to our gospel show, Spiritual Nourishment. You gotta check out the world according to Cheryl, even though I ain't on it. Uh, we got some feedback, Hobie. Do we now? Yeah, man, this one is from, you know, you know, we talked about this a few episodes ago. We said Pau Gasol was not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy uh, to be in the Lakers ring of honor. 
said he got in because he stepped up after Kobe passed away as opposed to when Kobe was on this earth. Kobe's family, um, you know, he's been he's been the man after Kobe passed. But a lot of people have been disagreeing with us, at least on Instagram. Uh, M.D. Bevel. Hmm, not devil. M.D. Bevel. Said, I don't know, Powell gave the U.S. grief in international play. 2010 led Barcelona to victory over Kobe and the world champion Lakers. And... I forget which year was that Powell was unstoppable against the U.S. until LeBron hit him in the face and dazed him, forcing him out of the game and effectively breaking his rhythm. I previously viewed him as just a role player. Okay, man. I mean, they ain't got nothing to do with the Lakers, yeah, but you I'm know sure, what? I'm sure Slava Medvedenko used to kill an international play, too. The I'm Lakers sure ain't. Did. They couldn't wait it's to get not, rid of him. No, 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 no. So, yeah, no. Nah, I mean... But, but we already agree that Kobe does not get his ring without Powell. And we could, I think we could leave it there without shading the guy so much. Nah. Kobe doesn't win that ring without him. So, you know, you want to throw him on? Throw him on. We come back, man. We have a post nut from a woman who made some bad decisions after getting some good wood. What happened? Kamal and I are going to fill you in. It's the MRA Podcast. <laughs> According to Webster's Dictionary, being in post-nut mode is when you have a clear mind and you can make sound decisions as if you just busted a nut. Yeah, I don't know if Webster actually said that. No, he didn't. But our listener Big Easy Q told us all about it and we can relate. Women, men. So listen, if you have a story of when you did something foolish. In pre-nut mode. Yeah, something really dumb. Maybe it was top grime. Especially something in pre-nut mode you don't want nobody to know about. Hit us up. We'll tell the world. We can all laugh at your expense and hopefully you'll learn from your mistakes. Aristotle once said, the results of pre-nut mode is the best teacher. I think he said some shit like that. Send us your stories at dearirby at the mrapodcast.com. That's dearirby at the mrapodcast.com. And now it's time for a post-nut mode story only on the MRA podcast. Okay, this was from Latisse in Jackson, Mississippi. I think that's the name. Latisse said, ah, oh, mm, I got the best dick I ever had from this white man. Mm. Hmm. It wasn't big, but he was eager to please. He was a hard worker. He was always ready for more. I met this man at a bar. I took him home. We had sex. It was the best sex I ever had. Mm. It was so good that before I knew it, I, oh, wow. I co-signed for him to buy a car. Yikes. <gasps> it was so good that I agreed to dog sit for this man, and I'm allergic to dogs. <laughs> Damn, that, that's how you know come out when it's good. She says, I hate dogs. The dogs had me sneezing every day. Then I took this dog to the dog park, and this fool attacked another dog. I got sued. <laughs> this wood is starting to add up, come out. Oh, my gosh. She said, the dick was so good that I kept putting up with him. But then he found out he had a heart condition. And what, and what I did not know was his good dick was courtesy of pills he was taking. Oh. Mm, now that he has man. Uh-huh. Now that he had this heart condition, he could no longer take the pills. Without the pills, the dick was about as erect as an iPhone cord. That is hysterical. And just as white. Needless to say, him and I are done, and I've been working to get my credit back together. That's Latisse in Jackson, Tennessee. Come on, where did Latisse go wrong, dog? I think she, you know, she, got her, she let herself get digmatized, man. It happens. Yeah, man. Listen, it happens. It yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I'm not going to fault her, you know, too hard, but when you start doing some uncharacteristic shit, I get yeah. like the cosine of the car. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, I can understand that. What I can't understand is the dog thing. You're allergic mm -hmm. to dogs, mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, getting sued for the dog by uh, attacking another dog. I'm handing that, you know, that lawsuit over to dude. I'm like as soon as I Absolutely. get it, I'm handing that mm -hmm. shit right over. That was yeah, your dog. To the man. The man yeah. who needed a co-signer is going right. to take care of this lawsuit. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But listen, man, this is probably this is probably one of the worst post nuts. I mean, not worse as far as entertainment value, but like, mm -hmm. geez, as far as like the consequences. Mm -hmm. This one was tough, man. Latisse went mm -hmm. through some mm -hmm. shit when she was in that pre-nut, even though she probably nutted a bunch of times, but the whole thing, <laughs> you know, the overall whole, experience, the whole experience she yes, was in pre-nut. Yeah. And it took yes. bad wood for her to get out of it. It took bad wood. 
<laughs> not wood at all, right? It was yeah, bad. Yeah. The noodle. Yeah, paper. Yeah. Take, took the noodle. Took the noodle took to the get noodle. her out of it, man. <laughs> all of a sudden, she came back to life, man. When we come back, the Woman King is kicking ass at the box office, but she's getting some hate from her critics. Come on. I don't know if you knew about this, about, about the backstory in that movie. I didn't know. Come Kamal on. and I are going to let you know what we think next. It's the MRA Podcast. <laughs> Hey guys, if you're digging the show, then please tell somebody. People might say something to you like, hey man, you know what podcast you listening to? And that's when you say the MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal. Or the MRA Podcast with Kamal and Kyle. Kamal, new movie out called The Woman King. It's about, uh, it's from Viola Davis. She's the star about a woman who was a mighty warrior in Africa back in the day. But her character represented a tribe that was known for selling slaves to America. Oof. Have you heard about this, Kamal? I did. The movie allegedly glosses over that part in the history to focus on the ass kicking. Now some activists are calling for a boycott. Kamal, are we shooting ourselves in the leg like Plaxico? Or is it a good idea to stop movies like this from coming out? I don't know, man. I think, here's the thing. I mm-hmm. think the intent was good. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it came from a good place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but damn, yeah. Like this tribe, who are the heroes of the story, are probably mm-hmm. the villains in real life. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it'd been like you know a special episode of the Smurfs when Gargamel, you know, saves like a, 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 a you know a dying angel. Mm-hmm. That's still Gargamel. Still Gargamel. Yeah, that's still Gargamel. And to the Smurfs, he is public enemy number one. So I think, mm-hmm. from my understanding, this tribe sold slaves. Uh, to the to the you know, the, the Europeans, mm-hmm. that thing to make matters worse, it was written by two white women. Mm. Yeah, black director, black woman director, Gina mm-hmm. Prince B- Blythewood, a uh, By- Blythewood. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but is that the lady from Love and Basketball? Yep. Yeah. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yep, yeah, uh, congratulations. It was number one movie this past weekend as well. That's a, I, I, that's huge to me, come on. That to me that. Look, man, we got we. I'm really tired of us taking something and saying it's not great because of the total picture. Look, to me, the focus of this picture was to empower black women and to inspire women, period. But black women Mm -hmm. to say, yeah, man, there was this tribe that whoops some ass. Now, if we're talking about before the slave trade, okay, that means they did a lot of shit that we wouldn't do in 2022. A lot of shit. They said a lot of words that we wouldn't say in 2022. You can't tell me. How are we canceling something from way back then with today's sets of rules? I bet you they did some bad shit. But come on, man. That wasn't the intent of the movie. And I'm I'm really, really tired of us saying finding fault with shit. Obviously, motherfuckers, a lot of people didn't. I don't know if you did. You know it before or did you know it after? Come on. When did you find out about this tribe? Oh, after. Exactly. Yeah, I wasn't up on. I knew African tribes, so other tribes, yeah, of course, you know. But I didn't know it was this particular one from the Woman King. Mm-hmm. No, but but that's but that's the bullshit. Is what I'm saying, man. It would be different if it was it was common knowledge and somebody made. It. I mean, come on, Viola's so solid. She she probably didn't even realize it. It's like you you're paying somebody from back in the day, bro. They're gonna have some indiscre- indiscretion. This is a huge indiscretion. Well, but, she she ahead. she knew. It has mm-hmm. to because I think they say the movie's anti slavery and her character on more than one occasion uh speaks you know, speaks out against the mm-hmm. selling of the slaves and you know, sl- selling mm-hmm. the Africans. So she's like I don't know if you ever seen this movie, um what was it called? Uh The Patriot with uh mm-hmm. Mel, Mel Gibson. Gibson. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it was like South Carolina, uh set in South Carolina pre or during the American Revolution, mm-hmm. and in South Carolina, they had slaves. But, like, you know, when they were signing people up for the war, you know, a slave, a guy came up with a slave, the guy signed up, and then, you know, Mel, Gibson, Mel Gibson's character asked the slave, uh, I need you to make your mark. And the guy is like, well, he's my slave, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm accounting for him. He's like, nah, but I still like, you know, every man needs to sign this thing. So my point mm-hmm. is, they made Mel Gibson who's the hero of the story, mm-hmm. like the one guy in South Carolina mm-hmm. who's like, he's he's sort of solid, you know? Mm-hmm. He's going to treat that slave like a man. And so, I think, 
Right, with some dignity. And I think Viola Davis's character, uh, you know, I think they're going to say, like, yo, her character, she's against slavery. Mm-hmm. But I think in mm-hmm. real life, she probably would have been probably cool. Not. Exactly. <laughs> her character would have been cool with it. She probably was the one pushing for it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> honestly, I think, I think if... Uh, I think if some sisters actually wrote this, yeah, I don't think they would be getting the the, the total backlash. But honestly, man, it's like we want we want black women to shine. We want them to get mm-hmm. their their due. But it's like, you know, they got on with the help. Mm. You know, it's always something. It's it's never oh, yeah. just perfect. It's never a perfect nah. situation, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. ah, but she getting her ass beat. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, with, with uh, Halle Berry, uh, with Billy Bob, mm-hmm. the she, white dude, mm-hmm, giving mm-hmm. the tour. It's always mm-hmm. something. Always. It's always something, man. And, and that's unfortunate, man. Like, where mm-hmm. is there, you know, you know, just movie where there's just positivity, there's no controversy. Uh, where is that? Even with, even with the black stuff with, you know, the butler and Denzel was a mm-hmm. crooked cop. And, you know, where is there just... Solid acting with a with a with a nice story, feel good story that you know makes everybody feel good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying everybody, I mean you know the brothers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Where is that? Mm-hmm. Kyle, this is a tough situation, man. I agree with you, but mm-hmm. I see where the I see where the the anger or the the bitchiness is coming from. I do. Yeah, it drives me nuts, man. I I, I you know it's. When I hear about somebody tweeted something in 2009, I'm like, you really telling me you sat there and went through every tweet <laughs> the way back to do? Come yeah. on, y'all. Like, if somebody no. gets on, Kyle, mm-hmm. if you become like ridiculously yeah. famous mm-hmm. overnight, somebody is going to go through the Kyle Irby tweets and start just like oh, yeah. scrolling or no, just yeah, sc- listen to every episode. They're yeah. going to listen to every damn episode of the MRA podcast until and, they find me saying and something. And not ridiculous. like looking for, I either. enjoy this man's brand yeah. of comedy. I enjoy this man's point of view. They're looking. No, 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 no. To, ah, he ah. laughed at Kamau's Mexican joke. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're looking to knock somebody down. Oh, yeah. You know, a peg or two. And that's the intent. And that's what bothers me. We come back, man. Is it time for Giselle to wave the white flag in her marriage to Tom Brady? We'll tell you who thinks she does need to get to step in. We're going to talk about that next. It's the MRA Podcast. You listen to us, but Kamal and I want you to know that we listen to you too. Even if we don't always respond to your tweets in a timely manner. I love how you say we, man. (laughs) So if you have some feedback, maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree. Or maybe you just want to tell us how much you love the show or that you want to testify about how we specifically helped you out. Or maybe you just want to tell Kamal how he was right or wrong. But mostly right. Whatever you want to tell us, hit us on our social. I'm at Kyle Irby. I'm at Angry Kamal. Hit us up and you just might hear your comment on the air. Promise. We'll be gentle. Uh, Kamal, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with the New York Post. They're very conservative. They can be, it feels racist when I read it sometimes. <laughs> they love putting black criminals on the uh, on their front. I mean, anytime you go to the New York Post, you will always see black crime on the yeah, front page. Yeah. It's, it's just a fun game I like to play. Are they, how, what's on New York Post page and, and 100% of the time? They right. lead with black crime. I'm not saying they're racist, but when uh, they talked about Tom Brady going back to football, they called him a uh, re nigger. So that's kind of <laughs> how they, that's just, you know, it's real close. Anyway, they say Giselle has a right to quiet quit on her marriage. Now, New York Post, not a woke paper. They usually are team dude, but they gave a female's perspective. And there's, there's a woman who wrote this piece, obviously, not obvious, but obvious to me. She talked about the interview that uh, Giselle had, Tom Brady's wife, with Elle magazine. And Giselle said, uh, football is a very violent sport. I have my children. I want them to be more present. She talked about, you know, this kid's age. They're like, I guess, I don't know, 7, 12, 15, something like that. And so she's like, you know, the kids need their 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 dad, that type of shit, you know. She also said the thing that bothers me, she, they said, that Giselle said, it's my turn. I've done my part just be there for Tom. I think you mentioned her moving to Boston and shit like that. I'm like, I, uh, this is, this is, this is wife shit dog. In the article, in the New York post article, it talked about how much money Giselle made. I think something like $40 million, some shit, some crazy number. She got money. 
it also said something that blew my mind come out you know on the MRA podcast I have said more than one time that it's usually the women that that initiate the divorce yes you did and I just that. say that shit from observation come out but according to this uh, article it's actually a fact oh, here, 69% here. of divorces are initiated by women and if mm-hmm. the woman is college educated 90% Ninety percent. Wow. It's and the, you know what bothers me is it's ladies. It's usually you who wants the goddamn wedding in the fucking first place, <laughs> and it's you that says I can do better. And it's frustrating because it's like, dude, it, this is a perfect example of men and women seeing things completely different. Like you know, in the article it said you know Tom, if Tom wants to save his marriage, it better be his last year playing football. Like, dude, what are you talking? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to play this game. What are you talking about? Uh, come on, I don't know. I'm just gonna say something more and more ignorant. How you feel? <laughs> it's coming. Uh, yeah. I'll say this. I'm gonna play it. devil's advocate. I'm a, I'm a, Please do. I'm gonna try to put myself in her ridiculously expensive shoes. Very expensive. Very expensive. Fancy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That she didn't pay for, probably. Probably not. Doesn't have to. <laughs> But, but has the money to pay for it yes, without time. Yes, exactly. If if uh, during the marriage, man, they had a deal. Mm. At the, mm-hmm. you know, I'm gonna play until this time, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna retire. Mm-hmm. And that time comes, and he retires. Then maybe two or three weeks later, he has a change of heart, mm-hmm. and now Giselle's like, "Hey, hold on, man, this ain't what I mm-hmm. signed up for." Mm-hmm. This is not what you told me. Mm-hmm. And when she says it's my turn, she was like, I gave you the agreed upon time from mm-hmm. here to here. And now mm-hmm. you told me that mm-hmm. after this time, it's me and the kids. You know, at this point, it's me and the kids' time. Mm-hmm. And now you're reneging. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see somebody getting upset with that. I you can know, see that too. I can see somebody getting upset with that. It's like mm-hmm. you know, wives of cops and stuff like that. Like those oh, detectives, yeah. they leave them. You Soldiers. don't love me. You love the job, right. and you know, I jo- can see Joe her. Hollenbeck's wife. <laughs> Joe Hollenbeck's wife. <laughs> buy a dog, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Giselle definitely needs to buy a dog. She definitely needs to buy. A definitely dog needs to buy nannies. a dog. Like, why are we bullshit? If you don't yeah. get some nannies and stop talking to me about this bullshit, but like, get the fuck out of here. You know, I think, I think for anybody else. This this could work. I think, you know, if she was married to anybody else who played to forty five, I mm-hmm. think it could work. But they say Tom Brady is like, you know, he's so detail oriented and oh, yeah. he studies so much and he prepares he like a sob. And mm-hmm. so it's like, even when he's not at work, he's probably mm-hmm. still working. Of course, you know. And so that quote. Right. That quote he said, come out. I ha- Tom says, at least he owned it. He said, I haven't had a Christmas in 23 years. Haven't had a Thanksgiving in 23 years. Haven't celebrated birthdays with people that I care about from if they are born August to January, they ask the fuck out, come out. Right. And not even, he's not even going to funerals and weddings. <laughs> if, <laughs> shit if, if Giselle was like, you know, it, like I said, if Tom said, look, I'm not playing past this age, man. I can't, mm-hmm. you know, who? And science and all of that shit mm-hmm. and the healthy diet and like you know you know the training staff is able to keep him playing he's like well shit mm-hmm. i'm gonna ride this thing out i didn't expect to be mm-hmm. playing the 45 yeah i should take care i should take advantage of this and she's like nigga this is not what we agreed upon so i can see her frustration mm-hmm. uh i i definitely think that her shit's on the rocks and he's trying to make He's trying to like salvage as much of it as he can without really mm-hmm. like bending or breaking. He's he's gonna mm-hmm. bend as much as he can. So I yeah. read somewhere that every Wednesday he's not practicing. Nice. You know, so every Wednesday Kill just me. count him out of practice. Kill me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> right, ladies, please. And so now we're getting Tom Brady, who's not really a hundred percent Tom Brady. Dude, because normally Wednesday is... he'd be practicing and preparing, and so now Wednesday he's not. So he might not be as effective this year in, in year 24, 25. Of course not. Yeah. Man. Of course not. And, and his wife, his marriage ruined his football career. Yeah, he's right. We're going to say, right. say oh, yeah. uh, age okay. finally yeah. caught up to him. Was nah, it age? Nah, no, it didn't. Nah. He ain't preparing because his wife is butthurt. Let me tell you why I'm, I have beef with this dog. First of all, 
every article I've ever read, when Tom talks about how long he wants to play, he says 50 to 55. Oh. He might be joking, but that's what he says. So even if he told her he was going to retire, it wasn't what he wanted. It meant he was leveraged. He was pushed to do something that makes her happy. And what she doesn't know is he's going to be at home miserable. Second thing is, imagine, ladies, maybe this will help you see it differently. If Serena Williams wanted to come out of retirement, and she did, and her husband, that white man, said, Serena, if you don't get your ass home and take care of your child, Mm. your tennis days are over. Mm. How in the fuck would you feel, (laughs) ladies? I know he ain't telling her. You don't own her. A word. Word. Right. So you tell him Jay Z telling Beyonce, telling the Queen B. Yeah. Yeah. The days are shaking it, the days of recording is over. That's it's enough. Over. It's over. Yeah. Your kids need a mom. Kids need it's a enough. mom. You can't be it's touring enough, no more. No no touring. Kids are in Get school. Get your now. ass home. Right. Get home now. Because that's what Giselle can tell Tom. I need you home now. And women are coming to the aid. Hey, he been, it's been too long. You need to get there now. I mean, get the fuck out of here. That brings it in pers- to perspective. That's what, no, you know, he's going to play till he can't. Because if he goes home, he's fucking miserable. Especially if he knows he can still get down. If he yeah. can't play no more, I think Alex Smith is content. I can't. My leg is almost I fell off. I can't go no more. Yeah, can't go. You know, Ben Roethlisberger, man, my arm, I, I can't throw more than 15 I yards. Go. I can't That's go no more. That's how warriors go, Kamal. They go right. to they can't. Yeah. Not till their wife starts bitching. Right. When so, you go, when you like, man, I can, st- I'm, I can still get down. I could still win. That's all I want to do is win. Right. Why the fuck you think I spend so much? To- Come on, man. You're get thinking here, about man. that while you're sitting at, you know, back to school. Now. Mad as fuck. <laughs> Mad as fuck. How many times come out? And this is why this MRI podcast is so important. How many times you've been at an event? That your wife wanted you to be and you mad as a motherfucker because you know good and well she figured out a way to get you to do some shit you didn't want to do. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Down to the getting married sometimes. It's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And then they'd be the main one 90% of the time to say this ain't working. This shit ain't working out for me, man. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Man, get the fuck out of here. Maybe we come back, man. Come on, I'm wearing black right now because I'm in mourning. I'm not going to mention what you're wearing right now. I'm looking at you right now, and I I hate it, man. I I, I fucking hate it. We're coming back. We're talking sports. It's the MRA Podcast. Guys, I have a comedy album. It's called Be a Man at All Times, and it's on, what's it on? Oh, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you stream your content. It's a damn good comedy album. I appreciate that, man. There's Stand Up on there. Kamal and I wrote a Who Done It mystery called The Case of the Missing Balls. That's on there. Based on the true story. <laughs> Check out the album. Show your boys some support. And you can buy it on iTunes. Keyword, buy it. Stop streaming. Come out, congratulations, man. Your Denver Broncos won. They had a rough one last week, man. Let's talk about last week first. How did you feel about I saw you that night, man, uh with after y'all lost. How did you feel? You were heartbroken. Uh but how did you feel when your Broncos had an opportunity to win? Russell Wilson's fourth and five, and they decided to kick the second longest field goal in NFL history, not in mile high where the ball travels, but in Seattle where it's <laughs> moist and damp and hard and the air is thick. Come out. How did you feel last week? And then tell us about this week. Well, I felt uh, when I saw when I saw the um, the call. When they were like, "Oh, mm-hmm. they're going. They, they're about to kick the field goal." Mm-hmm. I was like, out of all like these these new offensive minded genius head coaches, yes, we picked the dumb one. <laughs> That's how you felt at the dot. I, I I still feel that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. we got the dumb one. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we don't have the Shanahan's or the no, McVay no. or the no. you know the guy the from guy our, USC or the guy right, in Arizona uh, uh, yeah. uh, Cliff King. Yeah, we yeah, don't Kings, got those yeah. guys. Yeah, we mm-hmm. we got yeah the guy from the old school. Well, he's supposed to be from the new school, but it's like I don't think he's that bright. Mm, okay. You know, he's just not that. You know, he's not. So that this bright. week, how'd you feel? Ah oh, man, we looked awful. Okay. Who did yeah, play? We we played the uh played the Houston Texans and oh, it no, took no, like no. you know it took some you know, some late game heroics. Well, not the late mm-hmm. game, but still mm-hmm. it took some shit for us to beat the Texans and we only scored sixteen points. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like we were out there killing the game and stuff mm-hmm. like that, blowing them out like we should have. It's like we barely can score. The offense yeah. looks awful. Um, mm-hmm. Russell Wilson looks awful. Maybe Pete Carroll knew something. That let, that let Russ cook shit, he was like, y'all don't see this nigga in practice. <laughs> no, we ain't letting Russ cook. I know that's what he want to do. I bet it is. <laughs> I know that's what he want to do. Russ, Russ ain't is. got too yeah, many recipes. Yeah, hilarious. Yeah, man. So, yeah, we, yeah. Got, we got the victory, but it's like, it don't look too promising, you mm-hmm. know, things to come. Well, Raiders lost last week. Uh, painful, man. Off to a mm. good start against the Chargers. But we got this new weapon, you know, when you get your new toy. Derek Carr's ex-teammate in college at Fresno State. Uh, what was his name? Devontae Adams? Yeah. He's a great player, but Carr's going to him way too often, man. It's crazy. It's like I think he had like 17 targets last week. And the guys who you brought with you and you had war with you last time had almost a third of that. Come out. It's just, fellas, it's just like if you bring a new girlfriend into the equation. You can't. Or even if you have a daughter. You, you're gonna be in love with the daughter. I'll never forget this. Uh, who told me this? This, this comedy manager told me this. I can't, I'm thinking of his name right now. He said, "When you, when you, especially when you have a daughter, because it's, it's you, when you get home, you see your kids. Make sure you hug your wife first. Hmm. Don't hug the, the kids first, especially the daughter, because you, you're you're sending the wrong message to wife. You have to just like when co- coaches always support the quarterback, even if the quarterback stunk it up." You have to go first thing first, go to wife, give her a hug. How was your day? Blue shit. Then go get excited and see your kids who you really give a fuck about. Same, Derek Carr, you bring a new guy in and now the other guys are going to feel a certain kind of way. You got to let the new guy earn his shit. Don't just keep throwing it to him over and over and over again because you're going to, the other guys aren't going to be, they're not going to make a play. Hmm. You know, I love the number 13, man. We got Hunter Renfro, number 13 from um, Clemson. Great player, man. He made a big mistake at the end of the game. And it only makes me wonder, man, is he out of it mentally? Has he checked out because he's so frustrated at his touches? I'm not making excuses, even though I am. But I'm not happy about it, man. How's the fantasy going for you, dog? Uh, man, um, you know, mm-hmm. not looking too bad right now. My team does okay. not look good. I'm just playing teams, you know, worse than me. So oh, I'm getting, okay. like, that the happens. fantasy gods are just like. Yeah. You know, I could easily yeah. be like 0 the Broncos, two, huh? Just like the Broncos, <laughs> they can easily be zero and two. <laughs> they just go against whack ass teams, right? Now. Right. That's exactly uh, that's exactly what it is. I'm going against people who are just a, yeah. a, a, a shade worse <laughs> shade than worse. me. Shade worse. That's what happened yeah. last year. I think last year we were like three and zero. We played mm-hmm. like like the Giants and the Jets like the first two games. It was mm-hmm. like, and we still didn't make the playoffs. We start off like three and zero. Mm-hmm. You know, four and one or something crazy, and we're like, yeah, do you know, commits to lose like mm-hmm. you eighty know, percent of the rest of the games. It's like, dude, yeah. you play trash early, you know, you're yeah. gonna look all right. But we would definitely go from sugar to shit mm. real soon if we don't, you know, clean some shit up, clean some things up. We come back, man. We're getting into some whole shit. Then later in the show, we have a dear Irby from a woman who has some incredible, incriminating evidence against against her mortal enemy, and she wonders if she should share it or not. I love these situations. Come out. We're going to talk about it later. What should she do? Kamal and I are going to coach her up. It's the MRA podcast. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? If you're enjoying this show, do us a favor and donate to our Patreon. Word. Just go to www.patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and make a donation to the MRA podcast of Kyle and Kamal. Word. It's that simple. Listen to the show, love the show, share the show, break the show off with some dough. Bars. It is time for some whole shit. Kamal, what you got, bro? Okay. Here's the thing, man. Like, mm-hmm. This is partial whole shit. Partial whole shit. Partial okay. whole shit. It's mm-hmm. coming from uh, rapper Blueface and his girlfriend. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, Christian oh. Rock. We've talked about her on the show before. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. For uh, putting hands on Blueface. Right. So mm-hmm. we know about her fighting Blueface, putting mm-hmm. hands on him, trying to get to mm-hmm. him. Um, I think it was at LA Live. Uh, sheesh. I think it was. Yeah, maybe like last month or a month before last. Uh, it was recently. You know, mm-hmm. so they have a tumultuous relationship to say the least. Uh, it's been reported that she beat up his mom <laughs> and oh his God. sister. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yes. Uh, listen, yes. my mom and sister, listen. I gotta say, man, <laughs> sis, it, it's bad. I don't want nobody beat up my sister, but moms, come on, man. You can't let nobody put tips on your moms, dude. And we and still together. Cool. 
Yeah, not to exclude that you hit your sister, but I'm just saying, your sister might have, she might have been able to handle that. You know, it may not have been a mismatch, but you let him put tips on mom. Deuce, get the, you can't put tips on my sister either, but mom's come. Yeah, how do you fight. poke somebody still, you know? How you smashing that she, unless you and your mom's is tumultuous and y'all just, y'all don't it get don't along. It don't matter, it's a long. principal thing. It is. But and Die Hard you know, it might Three. Be Eminem. And Die Hard Three. And Die Hard Three, homie, bad guy who was Hans Gruber's brother. Like I don't mm. even like him, but you killed Still my brother. Man. Still my brother. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, now all right. this I, shit I is. Imagine. Yeah. I got to. I got to get you back. I don't even yeah. like him, but especially with like you know, for me, me and my sister are close. It was just us two. So I can't imagine still being attracted to somebody who had my sister covering her face through an ass whooping. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean, but I can't see it. Go ahead. Well, if you thought that was bad, yes. So, some footage uh, surfaced of Blueface knocking out Christian Rock's dad. <laughs> why? Why does this keep spilling over the family members, dog? Why can't I don't we just know. But I saw the footage. Between these two. Okay, so this is what I'm saying: partial whole shit, right? So I saw okay. the footage in the footage. Mm -hmm. Uh, blue. Uh, cre uh, dad is in Blueface's mm -hmm. face, right? They're arguing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And there's people around, and then for some reason, I don't. We don't know what's you know what was said. The dad takes a swing at Blueface, and I don't know if he mm -hmm. connects, but it's not a clean shot if he does connect or he grazes him. But you know, Blueface, you know, Blueface like 23 years old, so like great, great reflexes, right? Yeah, so he's able to like dodge it a little bit. So if he did catch him, mm -hmm. it was. You know, it was slight. Yeah, yeah. So people break it up, and Blueface mm -hmm. is trying to get to him and all of that. And, you know, obviously, it's a lot of people there, so he can't get to him. And then we see the next part of the video. It looks like Pops is walking away. He, you know, the situation is over, and Blueface comes out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, no. And, like, hits him, you know, bah, you know, blindsides him. Yeah. Knocks the dude out. Sneaks him. Mm -hmm. Sneaks the dude out. I don't know. You could say he was justified because Pop sucker punched him, and like one mm -hmm. sucker punch deserves, you know, deserves another. Yeah, I disagree, but eh. okay. So, because this is this weird social media age, Christian mm -hmm. Rock says uh, she posts on Instagram. Uh, so my boyfriend knocked my dad out. The family stuff didn't go well. I don't know even what's going on. So that's what she put on her her Instagram, kind of cavalier about it. Mm -hmm, and I'm mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm. dad was there arguing in her honor. That's horrible. Right? And she's like, yeah. I don't know. So yeah. my boyfriend knocked my dad out. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Instead of like, hey, dude, don't be knocking out my dad. So yeah. here is the whole shit from Blueface. Tell me if he's guilty of it, Kyle and listeners. So he posted... On Instagram, I'm her daddy now, <laughs> with the crying, laughing emoji <laughs> face. Dude, I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. I thought that was I a flag on the, the play, dog. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You like that pettiness? I oh, I love it. You were here for I all of it, huh? It. I'm here for it because, <laughs> Kamal, first of all, boyfriend and husband does take over for daddy. Yeah. And so, you know... Dog, that's that's I, I love it. I'm sorry, I love it. <laughs> Hell yeah, motherfucker, that's five million. That's me, homie. That's me, man. That's that's epic, dog. I mean, until I, it's me sleeping because somebody that took you know one of my daughters, but yeah, that's epic, bro. You listen, man. You you snuck the dude and. It's something about people that couples that stick together no matter what. The Bob, even though Bobby and Whitney didn't, there's that Bobby and Whitney love that I just love to see, man. I mm. love to see when Bobby and Whitney say, "You know what? That's me," and she says, "Yeah, that's he." And uh, and it, no matter what, we gonna keep riding together. So that part is beautiful to me, dog. Mm. Okay. Yeah, man. When we come back, man, let's get into our personal lives, man. My boys are making. Ends on the football field. Things are looking good, looking up, man. I'll tell you about it next. It's the MRA Podcast. Hey, guys and gals, if you're enjoying the show, let someone know. Whatever app you're listening on, please subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a positive comment. And why wouldn't you give us five stars and a positive comment? We're great. Yes, we are. This helps our placement so that other people can enjoy the show as well. And why wouldn't they? We're great.
All right, Kamal. What's up with you? Oh, man. Uh, at work, dude, I got recognized. I got a, what they call oh. a crystal apple. Uh, I got recognized for uh, doing, a doing, a, yeah, doing a good job as a teacher, man, from the school, mm -hmm. man. So, Congratulations, Crystal yeah. Apple. Yeah, Crystal Apple, man. I mean, it's a weekly award, but still, uh, yeah. I, I've never You'd gotten one that. in the past. Yeah, you've been fired a few times. In uh, teacher well, work. at this job, I haven't received one yet. And so it was no, like. not yet. So I got, you know, I, when I got it, the guy told me he was giving it to me and he told me all the reasons. And one of my, you know, students who I, uh, you know, one of my more challenging students, he, uh, mm -hmm. he's, he presented me with the award. Wow. Now yeah, exactly, man. So that yeah. made me feel a little bit mm -hmm. special. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Little bit. But uh, feeling, yeah, though. man, I thought I was doing the piss poor job, half ass job as usual. But uh, mm -hmm. they see something different. Hey man, <laughs> first of all, you got a heart for your job, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. Try to. If if I wasn't doing comedy, I'd definitely be football coaching, and that's similar to teaching and shit. You know, you're working with the youth, man. It's it's the future, man. It's nothing like it, dog. And speaking of the youth, man, you know my youngest son's playing football in Los Angeles. Yes. And 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 what I've been hoping for, Kamal. Every time, every game I see, he ain't starting yet. He gets in the game. I think this is his maybe fourth game. Yeah, he gets in the game and he makes it. He makes it happen. Couple weeks ago, two sacks, almost got three. This week, man, they finally found a spot for him in the starting lineup. And that's what the hell I told him would happen. That is, that's what I hope would happen. It's like when you got a fucking baller out there, you find a spot for him. I don't give it. You move somebody. You 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 don't tell me you have three studs just like him in your in your defensive uh, back uh, linebacker backfield. Please don't tell me you have four studs at D line like. One is one of your guys is movable, so move them, move them. Um, so that's great news. And then, you know, I told you, big boys up in Oregon. I tell you that. Yeah, congrats. And yeah, man. And so he was able to get on as uh, one of the student assistants until he becomes eligible. In I guess that's I don't know the next whenever it is in the spring. Okay. So he's in, he's out there. Got the playbook. He's Popky, man. He's Popky sending it in right now, and you know he ain't sending the plays. But I, I caught I caught a glance at him a couple of times uh, during the watching. He's the on the sideline. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. What's up. yeah, man. Gonna be traveling with the squad, man. You know, got his gear. You know, I never liked the Oregon Ducks. Come on, I've always hated them. Yeah, I, but I, I think I know why. Yeah, you do know why. Uh, however. I, you know me, Eisenhower Eagles. Gotta love that green and gold, man. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm put the shit on. If my boy's there, my boy's there, man. So I'm, I'm excited for it, man. Um, I told him, man, this is just such a golden opportunity to be on the sideline watching that shit. It's like when I used to open for Underwood, and after my set, even though he doesn't get a set, so to speak, I would, I would have to sit on the stage and watch her perform, and I hated it. So I just wanted to get off and go eat. But she'd be like, no, stay here, because sometimes we would banter back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then one day I realized, man, you're you're on stage with one of the best comics working, definitely one of the funniest in the history of comedy, period. Watch her. Watch what she's doing. Watch the expressions. Get you, 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 You're right here. <laughs> Learn. And so for my boys, like, dude, you got the fucking playbook. You, you got you got access to the to the facilities. Do not let this opportunity pass. And it looks like uh, he's on the right track, my guy. Coolness, man. Man, when we come back, man, it is Dear Irby time. There is a woman who has some incriminating evidence against her mortal en enemy and wonders if she should share it. What should she do? Kamala and I are going to coach her up. It's an MRA podcast. <laughs> You need some advice in your relationship and can't afford a therapist? Yeah. Hit us up and we'll get you through this. We won't even charge you a copay. Exactly. The Dear Irby Letter is our longest standing segment on the MRA dating all the way back to the webisodes. This is where we truly save relationships one listener at a time. We've saved marriages. Encourage divorce. Taught a guy how to please his woman. Encourage divorce. Yeah. So hit us up for advice and we'll help you out. Send your emails to Dear Irby at the MRA podcast.com. That is Dear Irby at the MRA MRAPodcast.com. Let's get into this, dear Irby letter. Let us. Dear Irby, I used to be friends with whore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold way to start a letter, bro. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we had each other's back from day one, but I found out she's a manipulative bitch. Mm. Damn. Damn. She stole my boyfriend after my father passed. Damn. 
<laughs> I sort of shut down and wasn't available for sex as much as he would have liked while I was in mourning. And she took that time to swoop in like an eagle and steal him. It sort of sh took me over the top. It sort of took me over the deep end. He wasn't even that good of a boyfriend to me because he cared more about his fancy Porsche than he cared about me. But the sex was amazing. I wonder if he was getting help. <laughs> even though he was trash. <laughs> even though he was trash. He was all I had at the time. And I became obsessed with him. Slash them. I started to follow her around. And some nights I could see them having sex at his place as I sat in my car crying. I had a bit tough. Maybe I'm a glutton for punishment, you think? As my dad used to say, people never change. My ex cheated on her too, and I just happened to be passing by that night. Okay, bye. Okay, I was stalking him. Hilarious. <laughs> I saw my ex bestie pull up while he was banging some new skank. All three of them got into it. all three of them got into it in the front yard, and it was a mess. After the smoke clears and everyone went home, my ex bestie came back and slashed a hole in all four of his tires. When I noticed this, I started recording on my phone and I got it all. After she slashed his tires, she pours gallons and gallons of black paint oh, on top of his white car. Oh. I felt a conflict of emotions as I watched this. I was shocked and satisfied at the same time. She caused thousands of dollars in damage to his precious little Porsche. I saw my ex post on Instagram that he wasn't sure who did this. He doesn't know if it was one of those two women or maybe even me. Hmm. For this reason alone, I'm thinking of sharing this tape with him. I want to think about it before I make this move. So I'm hoping you two can give me some advice. You guys surprisingly, you guys are surprisingly good at this stuff. Oh, really? I'm a little shy. A little shade, huh? <laughs> Let me know. I'll be listening. Rebecca in Buffalo. Come out. Help her out, dog. Uh, Rebecca, Becca, 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 Becca. You don't mind if I call you Be Becky. <clears throat> Listen, I'm going to say this. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't let anybody steal your sunshine. Right, mm. and what I what I'm what I mean by that is, don't allow somebody to change who you are. Mm. Okay, and so we what you're asking us, you know, you want us to let you know if it's cool if you to you know share that information, you know, mm -hmm. would you do it? If you know if this was a normal girlfriend. Hmm. You know who who hadn't stolen your boyfriend. If you and you and your ex, you know, amicably split up, and you saw somebody pouring gallons of uh, paint on this car, would you tell? Probably would because you guys ended on good terms. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you would normally do, I mm -hmm. would say do that. But if you come from that, you know, I'm saying the tradition of no snitching, mm -hmm. and I ain't seen shit. Mm -hmm. Don't let your anger guide you. Mm. Don't let your, you know, your bitterness mm -hmm. and your and your 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 quest for vengeance. Don't let none of that mm -hmm. shit guide you. Right? So True. it just depends. Mm -hmm. What type of person are you? Are you the person who likes to see shit? I'm not. You know, I will let karma take care of this whole thing. Looks like karma took care of the girl because dude cheated on her and karma got back to the uh, the boyfriend because she, uh, the paint you know, ruined his car, thousands mm, of dollars mm, mm. Uh, of damage caused. Everything worked its way out. Mm -hmm. You know? Corrected. Yeah, the universe corrected that. I don't mm -hmm. think you need to get involved myself unless you're that person who was going to tell him regardless. Then do what mm -hmm. you got to do. Me personally, I'm sitting on that one like you was crying all by yourself. I'm laughing mm -hmm. all by myself. Mm. That's beautiful, Kamal. When we come back, I'm going to weigh in. Yo, what's up? I'm Kyle. And I'm Kamal. And you're listening to the MRA Podcast where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. Um, Kamal, I love what you said, as usual, man. 
But you said it's something that I saw on the James Brown movie that really made me happy. James Brown said, I ain't going to let you bring me outside of myself. I never forgot that, man, because some people, people love because I, I'm an introvert. Kamal, you're an introvert as well. You're even more introverted than me. And so extroverts need your energy. Hmm. Right? A lot of times people will manipulate you for their fix. That's what I hate about, you know, if you're having sex with a woman while she's asleep. It's like, so you're getting off. You know what I mean? Like, you're just getting off. And she's she's a prop for you getting off. This feels creepy to me. I don't like that, man. So it's like, I never understand why, you know, anybody, especially ladies, when I hear you see you do this. Like, you know, you get a guy to propose. He didn't want to propose. You get a guy to retire. He didn't want to retire. It's it's manipulation. You're, you're, you're taking advantage of, of you're using your powers for what feels like evil to me. So, Rebecca, OK, you have this evidence. I wouldn't do shit with it unless unless they came to me, because as you said, Kamal, excuse me, because as you said, Kamal, he already got his from her perspective. You won. Now you do not be like my Raiders and let it get out, get out of hand. Cause you got the win. <laughs> Sit on the win, take the win. But no, my thing is this only tell in two circumstances. Number one, if he brings you up in a criminal investigation mm-hmm. and number two, if you're going to go back to him and you might say, well, why would you go back to him? Well, obviously you ain't over this motherfucker. No, I never understand why you're going to spend all this time outside of his house. You could be inside of his house to this day. You'd be in the rotation, but you'd be inside. You already know what he's doing and you're still there. So you might as well deal with your own jealousy. And now your back can be blown out as well. See, I would tell him if you want to go back, be like, all right, look, I got to tell you the truth, man. I I ain't over you. I'm still mad. I need to get over it. But here, man, it was that bitch. And all right, let's go. She out. Now it's going to be somebody else later. So. Just don't yeah. think you're gonna get rid of her with this shit. But if you can, if you can cope with the truth, which you probably can't. Other than that, just sit on that, man. Unless unless the popo come for you, don't go out like that. Where can we find you? Twitter, Instagram, and Clubhouse at Angry Kamal. I am at Kyle Irby 13 on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, at Kyle Irby on Twitter and Facebook. The MRA Podcast. We're at the MRA Podcast on Twitter, Instagram. No, not yeah. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook is at the MRA Podcast. And you can see the video version of this show on Kyle Irby's YouTube. Kyle Irby 13 is my website. No, I'm not. YouTube KyleLurby.com is my website this week you can see some of the stuff I've been in in the past and the MRI podcast is our website and that's where you can watch or listen actually you can't watch on the MRI podcast uh, .com but you can listen to 212 episodes all 212 episodes that's crazy that we have done man come out thank you for showing up every single time and speaking of showing up we won't be here next week man. we will not be here man this is part of the new living our lives and not not pretzeling we ain't pretzeling no more man so the week of the 28th of september we will not have a show i am sorry i'm gonna miss y'all man but we'll be back on october 5th god willing um we got a little family situation that we got to take care of not tom brady style but we got to do our thing so uh we ain't gonna be there man hey come out but thank you for being here today and bringing it every single week dog Hey man, me too, man. Ladies, we love you, fellas. Be a man at all times. Deuces. MRA. <laughs>